Directions are going to tell us simply to simplify. In other words, we aren't going to solve anything because there's no equals in these, so we're just going to... Oh, bloody. Come on. Oh, maybe if I spell the word. So we're going to start off simple. I'm going to give you kind of pictures of what this looks like. And then we'll just use this rule that's going to help us do things more quickly. So the first problem is like the one that we had already on the board. And that is the x cubed times x to the fourth. So again, what I want to do is to share what each of those looks like. So x cubed is simply x times x times x. And then x to the fourth is x oops, times x times x times x. So it just turns out to be one big, huge, long multiplication problem of a bunch of x's. So we could count them up and we would get a total of seven x's. So what the rule says is when the bases match, just go ahead and add your exponents. And we get x to the seventh. Okay. Now, let's take a problem that has a base that is a number. And looking at that problem, Write down on there what you think the answer is. What do you think you get when you multiply 8 cubed times 8 to the fourth? My question is, raise your hand if you got 64 to the seventh power. Okay? All right, so I'm going to draw out this and tell me if that's really what we're going to get. So let's see what it looks like. So we get 8 times 8 times 8. And then we're going to get 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. So if we use exponents, how many 8s did we end up getting? We ended up getting a total of 7. So what didn't happen is that we didn't multiply our bases together. We wrote the base once, and then we went ahead and we added the exponent. So for those of you who wrote 64 to the seventh power, you're going to need to now go back and correct what you just did, and hopefully you won't make that mistake again. Okay? Now again, we don't have time in our lives to sit there and draw all these pictures, so we want to be able to use the rule. So let's do one. Uh, let's see. How about 4y squared times 5y? Now, this one is different from the last two because our monomials contain coefficients. So what we talked about, I think Jordan C. answered that question for us. She said, take your coefficients and multiply them. And then what we did with the exponents is we added them. But here's the weird thing. Do you guys see an exponent on that second y? No. No. What would it be? One. One. So if you don't see an exponent then that means it's 1. So we get 4 times 5 is 20. And 3 plus 1, or, or 2, sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. I love to give away answers. So there's your answer is 20y cubed. Okay. All right, let's change it up. Let's have uh, two monomials that contain two different variables and see how that changes how we tackle the problem. So we have a to the fourth, c cubed, and let's multiply it by a c to the fifth. So if you notice, we do have coefficients here, but we don't see them. If we don't see the coefficients, what are they? They're 1. So we're not going to worry about multiplying 1 times 1 because that's kind of a waste of time. So let's look at the a's. If you look at the first monomial, there's four a's. If you look at the second monomial, how many a's are there? One. There's only one. By definition of you seeing it, that means there has to be a minimum of one. Let's look at the C's. On the first one, I see three. 
On the second one, how many are there? Five. Five. Okay. So what we do is we go ahead and do the math, and we get 4 plus 1 gives me a to the 5th, 3 plus 5 gives me c to the 8th. Now, are you going to show me all these intermediate steps where you're showing what you're multiplying and showing what you're adding? Are you going to have to draw pictures? And the answer is, it depends on you. If you're struggling with trying to get to the answer, then yeah, you probably need to do those intermediate steps. For me, those are what I call brain steps. That's what I'm doing in my brain. But what would I expect to see? I'd expect to see the original problem, and I'd expect to see the final answer. That's the minimum amount of work that I would need to see on these types of problems, okay? Now, we're going to talk about some other problems that get a little bit more complicated. Remember I said we're going to get into harder ones? Well, now is the time. So let's see what we got here. We've got negative 9x cubed We're going to multiply that by, ooh, negative 2 thirds. So now I'm going to throw fractions at you, plus signs. Let's see, variable wise, we've got x, y to the fifth. And we've got one more. Oh my gosh, negative 1 half x squared, y to the fourth. Ooh. All right, so we've got a mon three monomials. What we're going to look for is all the coefficients. So I'm going to pull them out. Now, notice that we've got two that are fractions and one that isn't. So what I'm going to do is to create a fraction out of the one that did not have a denominator. So he gets a denominator of one. And then I'm going to multiply him by the negative two-thirds. Make sure you're always putting that negative sign up in the numerator so you can keep track of it. And then we have a negative one half. And then let's look at the x's. So on the first one, there were three x's. On the second one, it didn't show an exponent, so that means there's one x. And on the last one, there are two x's, y's. Now, how many y's are there on the first one? There aren't any, so we can use an exponent of zero to represent that. Uh, let's try that guy again. That was ugly. And then the second one, we had five y's, and the last one, we had four y's. Okay? Now, the reason why I want to show that we have this three exponents and three exponents is because there are three monomials. So the number of monomials should be the same as the number of exponents that you're going to combine to get to your answers. So just to show you that there is um, consistency in this problem. All right, so first thing I want to do is place the sign in my answer. So I have three negatives, and we talked about a rule. If there's an odd number of negatives, what kind of answer do you get? We're going to get a negative. So my answer I know is going to be negative. And then I look for any cross-canceling that I can do. So 3 goes into itself once and into 9 three times. 2 goes into itself once and into itself once, leaving me with 3 times 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 times 1, which is a grand total of 3. We already got the sign in of negative 3. All right, now we just add up exponents. So we get a 3 plus a 1 is a 4 plus a 2 is a 6. And then we've got a 0 plus a 5 is a 5, plus a 4 is a 9. So your answer is negative 3, x to the 6, y to the 9th. Now again, with as much trouble as I saw you guys have on the last quiz, with doing um, multiplying monomial, or multiplying fractions, I suggest that you guys actually uh, show that part of the math, that adding the exponents shouldn't be an issue. Okay. All right, here comes the next guy. So we've got 8a to the fourth times negative 2a squared, and then we're going to ooh, subtract a to the fifth times 7a. All right, so this problem is different because this is the first time I see a subtraction sign in the problem. There's a difference between a subtraction sign and a negative sign. Okay, so according to order of operations, it says you need to take care of any multiplication or division first, then adding or subtracting. 
So we're actually going to figure out what the product, product of 8a to the 4th and negative 2a squared is. And we're going to figure out the product of 8a to the 5th and 7a. And then we're going to see if there's any way for us to do more math. So to do this, we get coefficients 8 times negative 2. And we have 4a's and 2 more a's minus coefficient-wise. There's a 1 with the first guy because we don't see him times 7, and then we have a 5 plus, and again, a 1. Now, that's a brain step, so I don't necessarily need to see that, but I will see this next step as mandatory. Uh, 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 4 plus 2 gives me 6, so I have 16a to the 6 minus 1 times 7 is 7, and 5 plus 1 is 6. So now we look at what we ended up with. And what do you notice about our two monomials? What you got, Lauren? They have the, the same exponent. Not only is the exponent the same, guess what else is the same? The variable. What do we call those guys that have the same variable and same exponent? They're like terms. And guess what we can do with like terms? We, oops, like terms. That's good. We can add or subtract them, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Because basically what we do is we factor out the variable. So that's the distributive property, another way of doing it. So what's negative 16 take away 7? So we get negative 23a to the 6th. And there's your final answer. So again... Mandatory is the original problem. Mandatory is the result of doing the multiplication. And then obviously mandatory is getting the final answer. Okay, let's do one more like that. And I'm not going to show all the ad nauseum steps. We'll just get using our ideas here. So we've got 5n squared. And I want to multiply it by negative 3nx squared times x squared. From that, we're going to subtract negative 3n times 2n squared x times x cubed. What do you get? Let's just do it piece by piece. What do you get when you take the coefficients 5, negative 3, and 1 and multiply them together? What's that give you? 5 times negative 3 times positive 1. Make it. So we get a negative 15. Now, with the variables, we're going to go alphabetically. What's n squared times n? How many n's? 3. We had 2 from the first guy, 1 from the second guy. There aren't any from the third guy. X's. How many do we get? We have x squared times x squared. 2 plus 2 is 4. That's the result of doing the multiplication. You must show me that. Okay. What's negative 3 times 2 times 1, looking at the coefficients of the other three monomials? Six. Negative 6. I have to put it in the parentheses to separate the subtraction sign from the negative. All right, what's n times n squared? Yeah. Not at 3n. Oh, n. n cubed. We need to make sure we say this correctly. And what's x times x cubed? x to the fourth. So in the last problem we did, we decided to keep our eye out to see if we had like terms. Do we have like terms? Same variables with same exponents. They both have an n cubed. They both have an x to the fourth. So the answer is we do again have like terms. Oops. So we go ahead and we factor out the like terms, leaving us with negative 15, take away negative 6, and then the n cubed x to the fourth repeats on the outside. All right, so how do I do a negative 15, take away a negative 6? How do I finagle that one? Ethan L. Uh, instead of subtracting a negative, you add a positive. So we're going to change our subtraction problem to an addition problem, but in order to do that, we have to change the sign of what comes after him. So we've got a negative 15 and a positive 6. Signs same or different? They're the not the same. I got a negative in the front and a positive now in the back. If they're different, what math do I do? 
I'm going to subtract. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? negative? What's 15 take away 6? So you get oops, negative 9. And, oh, that doesn't look good. Negative 9 n cubed x to the fourth. And that's your final answer. Okay.